Hey guys, welcome to the show. I'm Andrew. And I'm Travis. Well, after two thrilling series, we're on to the American League Championship Series where the New York Yankees and the Houston Astros will be facing off to decide who will represent the American League in the World Series. Um, obviously, this is a very exciting series. The Yankees coming off a come-from-behind victory against the Indians. Oh, they're now 2-0, and <laughs> that was a very exciting series. I wonder what they can do to kind of top that in this next one. But, uh, Travis, let's start with the starting pitching here. Um, who do you think has got the advantage here, starting with the Houston Astros and what they've done so far in this postseason? Yeah, I think this is going to be a really good starting pitching matchup. In the postseason, Justin Verlander is 2-0. and He's pitched 8.2 innings. He's given up seven hits and three earned runs. He's got an ERA of 3.12, but that really doesn't do it justice. Justin Verlander has been the ace the Houston Astros needed when they acquired him at the trade deadline, and he's been very terrific so far. Plus, they got Dallas Keuchel, who's 1-0. He won 5.2 innings pitch. He gave up three hits one earned run, and struck out seven. And he's got a 1.5 ERA. So, ERA. so their two, two top guys have been really lights out for them in the first series. And I expect them to continue their success against the Yankees. These are two of the top pitchers in the MLB. And then you got Charlie Morton and Brad Peacock, who have really struggled. You know, Charlie Morton's got a 4.15 ERA one start, and Brad Peacock's got a 10.13 ERA. So really, for the Houston Astros, they're starting pitching – has been really good at the top, but the bottom of the rotation has really struggled so far. Yeah, just look at the numbers for uh, the Astros. I know um, there's not really big sample size for Morton and Peacock. I mean, Morton's only pitched four innings, and Peacock's only gotten two and two-thirds innings. So, I mean, there's not really a large sample size, and those guys got hit around pretty uh, pretty significantly in their two starts. But, um, you know, obviously that's something to look out for as the series goes on. It's not a five-game series. It's a seven-game series. So we're probably going to see at least one of those guys at least twice, um, if you know, assuming that the series does go, you know, for a pretty significant amount of games. Uh, but let's go with the Yankee starters here. You know, I like Sonny Gray, but he's got he's got eight point one zero ERA. I mean, obviously that um, you know that series between the Indians and Yankees is kind of a high scoring affair for the most part. Two high powered offenses. Um, I'm wondering if they can he he, he can really just like get together. I think and I think he's got the talent to do so in this series. And then Mashiro Tanaka, um, you know, he's pitched really well so far in this postseason. Seven innings pitch, zero earned so far. So if he can continue his do- his dominance so far, that will go a long way for the Yankees. Yeah, I think Sonny Gray is going to be able to turn it around. He had a really bad first outing in his debut for the Yankees in the postseason. But wow, Ma- Mashiro Tanaka was just brilliant. He went seven innings, he had struck out seven, did not give up a single run. That's, kind of, that's the expect that that's what the Yankees expect from Tanaka in the postseason. They gave him a pretty good amount of money, and he pitched really good. And also, CC Sabathia did really good for them. He went 9.2 innings pitched and two games started. He struck out 14 hitters, which CC Sabathia in the last few years really hasn't been that great. But in the postseason, he's been electric for the Yankees. And Luis Severino, he had a terrible wild card performance, but he really bounced back with a really good ALTS performance. So in this matchup, I kind of like to say, you know, Justin Verlander and Dallas Keuchel kind of match out Bashiro Tanaka and CC or Luis Severino. But overall, I got to give the advantage to the Yankees. I think their pitchers have been really good so far, and I expect Sonny Gray and Luis Severino to get better in the next performances. Yeah, for me, I actually have to go with the Astros here because, like we said, Verlando, Verlander and Keiko are, you know, probably the two best pitchers in this series here in terms of starting pitchers. And they both performed like that so far in this postseason. So, I mean, in a seven-game series, you're probably going to see these guys twice. And, you know, they only need to win four games. And that's a huge, huge advance for the Astros. They didn't get anything out of Peacock and Morton. Who can, they guys can, those guys can kind of, you know, take a step forward and kind of improve on what they've done so far in the postseason where they've kind of struggled a bit. They can get some good performances out of those two. I think it's a huge advantage for the Astros. So I'm going to take the Astros in this one. Yeah, and then we're going to transition to the offense. Andrew, I'll start with you. How have the Yankees hitters performed in the playoffs so far? Very up and down, to say the least. So let's start with Aaron Judge, who might be the MVP for the season. He's at least going to win AL Rookie of the Year. I mean, that's for sure. But 
just looking at his numbers here, he's batting 125 with one home run, four RBIs, and get this, 16 strikeouts. Oh, uh, that's an insanely high number. I mean, for a guy who has strikeout um, problems, you know, already, I mean, that's just wow. 16 strikeouts yeah, so far. That that's the most strikeouts in a playoff series. You broke the record. Yeah, I mean. I mean, as much as Aaron Judge is, you know, capable of breaking home run records and, you know, something we're looking forward to seeing going on to his career, I mean, the strikeouts, man, they're just a huge problem for this kid. And if he can figure – I mean, it doesn't get much easier for him, too. I mean, Verlander and Keuchel, those guys are going to bring it to him in this series, man. You know, that's something to look out for. And just looking down the list for Yankees batters, I mean, Gary Sanchez, he's got two home runs, three RBIs, bang, 222, so – he hasn't really gotten to go, but he hasn't been, you know, awful by any means. It's a small sample size, like we said. It's a playoff, so they're playing the top pitchers uh, for each team. So I'm not too worried about Gary Sanchez. Uh, Diddy Gregorius uh, has been pretty solid, bang 250, three home runs, six RBIs. And then Brett Garner has been kind of a consistent force for them, batting 320 for them, kind of been very solid for them. Yeah, Brett Gardner has really been a grinder. He had that great 12-pitch at bat against Andrew Miller. That was just a battle. Well, I want to talk about Didi Gregorius, who was the Game 5 hero in the ALDS. He had two home runs off Corey Kluber, who may be the AL Cy Young. So, Didi has really been producing when they need him to produce. But talking about the Astros, holy cow, their offense has been on fire. Jose Altuve, the potential AL MVP, he's batting 533 with three home runs and four RBIs. He is just killing it in the postseason. And his partner, George Springer, is doing just as good. He's hitting 412. And the Yank, the Astros lineup, they have six guys who are hitting – sorry, they have five guys hitting above 375. They've been producing up and down this lineup all postseason. So, for me, I have to give the advantage to the Astros. I think their hitting has been hot, and I think it's going to stay hot against the Yankees. Yeah, I was thinking of the Astros, too. I just feel like the Yankees are more reliant on the home run ball, while the Astros, they just have the ability to just grind out at bats and kind of string along good at bats and good hits um, for, you know, over the course of an, of an inning, much more so than the Yankees that have been proven this so far this postseason. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to take the Astros on this one. Yeah, then moving on to the defense, this is two teams that are pretty good at defense for both of them. But for me, I have to give the advantage – to, well, i got to give it to the Astros because Carlos Correa and Jose Altuve are two of the best middle infielders in the AL, and I really like George Springer in the outfield. I feel like the Astros have had really good defense in the postseason, and they got a lot of good individual defensive players. So for the defensive matchup, I have to give the advantage to the Astros. Yeah, I'm keep with the Astros too. I mean, obviously look at the errors here. Uh, they only had two errors so far in this postseason, while the Yankees have three. Now, obviously, the Yankees have played a lot more games so far because they had to play the wild card, then they played all five games against the Indians. But, uh, yeah, I'd go with the Astros here, too, just because they have, such amount, they have a great amount of talent across the board in their defense. Yeah, and then transitioning to our final category, the bullpen, um, what do you think – what do you see in this matchup? Well, obviously, the Yankees' bullpen has been a very good unit so far in this post, and they've kind of lived up to the hype, so, so to speak. Uh, Aroles Chapman, boy, if you have any doubts about him maybe being tired after last postseason where he was used extensively uh, with the Cubs, um, boy, has he been dominant so far this postseason. 6.2 innings pitch, only five hits allowed, zero earned runs and 13 strikeouts, uh, two saves as well. So he's been a dominant force again uh, for the Yankees. And if they can get some leads going into the ninth inning for uh, some of these games here, I mean, boy, what an advantage to have and to have maybe the most dominant and, like, really just fear-inducing uh, closing the game. I and mean, he, he can hit triple digits still easily on his fastball. Yeah, the Yankees' bullpen continues to be their biggest weapon in the postseason. And it really all starts around Roldis Chapman, Tommy Nail, Dylan Pedantis, and David Robertson. All four of those guys have an ERA of three or lower, and both Tommy Nail and Aroldis Chapman have a 0.0 ERA, while David Robertson has a 1.13 ERA. So they continue to just be absolutely dominant for the Yankees. So this is an easy one for me. I definitely have to give the advantage to the Yankees and the bullpen. This is probably their best weapon on the team. Yeah, Sam, I'm going to stick with the Yankees here. There's just The numbers just jump off the screen here. 
I mean, they're just, they've just been very good so far in this postseason. Going up against two very good offenses, too, in the Twins and the Indians. So, very impressive. Yeah, so overall, who do you, who do you have in this series? Well, this is a tough one because, you know, I feel, feel like the Astros are just a better team overall. Uh, they just have a lot more talent across the board. But there's just something about the Yankees this postseason where they've been able to pull off, you know, this, these miracle games, you know, especially in the Indian series. They come down, coming down uh, from 2-0 down in the series to come back and win that series. It's really tough to really rule these guys out. But uh, the Astros, they just have too much, I think. I think they're going to win this one. Yeah, the Yankees' comeback was completely incredible to come back down, being down 0-2. And I'm kind of feeling the same way. I have to go with the Astros because their offense has just been on fire all postseason, and their starting pitchers have been really good. And the Astros have home field advantage, which is a big factor in the postseason. So I have the Astros winning at six, but I think this is going to be a really fun series to watch. Yeah, agreed. Well, if you guys liked what you saw here, keep on uh, liking and commenting in the comment section below. Uh, make sure to subscribe as well. Uh, I'll, we'll be having our National League Champion Series preview up shortly, so uh, feel free to check that out. Yeah, thank you guys so much for comment, uh, for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you agree with us, if you disagree with us, we'd love to have that conversation. And, yeah, you know, thank you guys so much.